Y'all heard about that? They're trying to get him to boycott the Derby. Because it's, I guess, all white people. So he shouldn't ride. I'm like, isn't that dumb? Like, shouldn't he be riding? That's so dumb. And when did hats belong to white folks? You ain't been to the Memphis Convocation? You ain't been to the Church of God in Christ Convocation? You haven't been, you haven't, you haven't been to the convention and seen every shape, form of hat known to man? You haven't been under Big Mama's bed and seen the boxes? of all variants of shapes and sizes. I mean, my mama would leave and go out of town or something and we'd be all in them hats. Oh, I'm sorry. She wasn't supposed to know that. Man, we'd be, boy. My sisters would be, I'd be trying to figure out how is this a nice hat? I, I, hat tanks for me, I don't understand. My wife, they watch the Kentucky Derby and they just, she just on the three way with folks. Oh, the, I just, do you see that one? And I'm just looking like, oh, that's horrible. Hey, Amen. Man, go on and ride your horse. Ride your horse. Hey, Amen. Get you a black horse. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Or some folks can't take a joke. <laughs> but yeah, that's just, it makes no sense. Why would he boycott? I mean, he's the one you want to ride, to integrate it. Yo, well, they've been riding, but they're telling him not to. Hey, he done trained all his life for this event. You better let him ride. Amen. At least he's doing something with his horse. He ain't in the hood like, you know, we know the dude just <laughs> trot by every now and then with that old sick horse. That horse can't be in any contest. It's just sick. It's a hood horse. Y'all didn't have hood horses? Just hood horse. All the kids begging, let me ride, no saddle. Let me ride, no shoes on it. <laughs> See, y'all didn't grow up like I did. Y'all don't remember. Well, I had relatives that had them hood horses. One of my uncles, he's like, man, I got, I got horses, man. So I'm thinking he's rich. I went and saw them horses. I was like, bro, I don't, know, I don't think you have horses. These some jackasses and ponies. These ain't horses. <laughs> it's that horse off, off hee haw. I think a horse has teeth like that where they can't close their mouth. I think that's a donkey. <laughs> All right, okay, let's get on back. <laughs> hey, man, those are the good old days, though. The good old days. <laughs> All right, so this morning we're going to be talking about authority. Last hour authority. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash authority dot P. D F. When you have it, say amen. <laughs> authority. Amen. Last hour authority. Amen. So the word authority has some specific, some very good definitions uh, that will help you understand what I'm going to be talking about. You know, we sung the song, you know, um, there's power in the name of Jesus. Y'all can shut the lights off. Shut. That's, ooh, that's country. Shut the lights off. Uh, <laughs> but um, y'all heard the song, there's power in the name of Jesus. How many of you believe that? So that power in the name of Jesus, we have that power. We have the authority to use that power because it comes from Jesus. Amen. And if you're in Christ, you have access to that. So you have authority in the earth. 
You have authority to speak out against demonic forces. Amen. You're not powerful enough to fight them off, but you have authority with the blood of Jesus to get rid of them. Amen. They can't, they're no match for Christ. So you have the authority to speak it in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody, well, what's his, you got to say his name in Hebrew. I don't speak Hebrew. I'm not saying his name in Hebrew, and I'm not saying his name in Greek. I don't speak any of those. I'm saying Jesus. That's the name I've seen demons come out of folks with. Somebody is twitching and blinking right now because I'm saying the name Jesus. And the power in the name is messing with the demons in them. That, I cast a demon out in the name of Jesus. So I don't know all this, you know, I know folks like to get deep and, oh, you better call them Yahshua, Yahshua, uh, nope. I'm going to speak English. So authority is the power or right to give orders, make decisions, and enforce what? Obedience. So you can make the devils obey you with Christ's authority. He says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll what? That's obedience. He has to obey the word. So you speak the word. But you got to submit to God. That's the part. Oh, that's the part people miss. They miss the whole submitting to God. You got to do that first. So you submit to God, then you can resist the devil and he will flee because the word says he was. If he's lingering, you remind him, nope, the word said you had to flee. So you have the power to enforce obedience with authority. Amen? You have the right to give orders with Christ's authority. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. You can speak to depression. You can speak to anxiety. You can speak to all of those things. I need that to be gone right now in the name of Jesus. Because he's given me this authority. You can call all kinds of things to happen. Amen. Now women, don't be trying to call forth a husband. I'm using my authority. Come forth now, bow-legged and 5'11", in the name of Jesus. You know that's old school when they wanted a bowling. I never even understood that. Ooh, he bowlegged. <laughs> what? What is the deal with the bowling? I guess he can ride that horse, that ha half a horse, hood horse. <laughs> he has to be bowlegged because he don't have no saddle. <laughs> <laughs> that's so ghetto. Oh, that's just so ghetto. But yeah, don't be trying to call forth, you know, the husband of your dreams. And I because first of all, you have absolutely no understanding of what you need. You just don't. You can look at the husband you have and say, I, now this right here, I would have never picked. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. He works. What you wanted to pick wasn't going to work. Yeah. Amen. You had it drawn on a piece of paper that you folded up and carried around with you all the time. You meet somebody, wait, hold. <laughs> no, no, don't try to use your authority for stuff like that. It, it doesn't work. Now, men, it can work. Uh-oh. Yeah, it, it can work because you're the one that finds the wife. So you can use God's authority and be like, you know what? I think it's time. Grab her by the hair. I just, no, nah, I'm just, you know, you do that in 2020, the hair will disconnect. It'll just, she'll just loose it. Couldn't have no caveman in 2020. You can't drag nobody by the head. <laughs> you get home, you, you walk all the way back to your cave, you gonna look back and, oh man. <laughs> what is wrong with me this morning, Lord?
<laughs> but, <laughs> but seriously, you do. You have authority to do that as men because you're supposed to find the wife. Amen. So you go out and use the authority and say, I, I call her forth in every demon, every spirit, every demonic force that's blocking it. I have authority over it. Amen. The second definition of personal organization having power or control in a particular, typic, in, uh, in a particular typically political or administrative fear, a sphere. And the third one, the power to influence others, especially because of one's commanding manner or one's recognized knowledge about something. This is the one that you got to have with the devil. Okay? Because the devil, you, you, you don't want to come to him if you don't have recognized knowledge. Like, if you don't understand what you're doing, you don't, you don't want to approach the devil. That's why you need to Know the word for yourself. Amen. The, the Bible says the sons of Sceva tried this. And the devil didn't recognize their knowledge. He basically told them. That, and here's the crazy thing. They knew they didn't know. Because they told the devil. They start calling name dropping. I cast you out in the name of Paul. The God that Paul serves. The devil looking at them like, you can't do that. Lie. The Bible says whip them naked. You can't do that. So you have to have knowledge. That's why it's important to get the word. Amen. It's important to get an understanding. And all that getting, get an understanding. Amen. Now, you shouldn't be scared of demons. You shouldn't be scared of devils. If you are scared of them, you're scared because you're not prepared for them. You can't go to battle without tools, I mean, without weapons. So, to have this authority, you need the devil to recognize your authority. Amen? I remember we were uh, dealing with this girl at, at my old church, and we were casting demons out of her, and she was rolling on the ground and there, whatever, and my, my pastor... At the time, he, you know, he, he came over there while I was dealing with her, and he stood next to me, and he was letting me do it. You know, I guess I was in school or training, and he was letting me deal with her, whatever, whatever, and she was on the ground, and I was trying to cast the demon out or whatever, and she looked at him, and he said, you, he, he asked the demon, he said, do you know me? And the demon looked at him and said, yeah, you son of God. I looked, I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> that was pretty good. That devil recognized his authority. Called him a son of God. Yeah. So the devil knows. So if you're going to deal with the devil, he needs to recognize your authority. As believers, we have authority in Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Look at somebody and say, you have authority as a believer. Look at somebody and say, you have authority in Christ Jesus. Authority. Luke 10 and 12. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And over how much? How much? How much is all? Over all the power of the enemy. How much is all? You have power over all the power of the enemy. Well, then why does the enemy just keep doing this? Because you're letting him. Look, even when the enemy is messing, you, messing with you, I promise you it's not as bad as he's trying to make it seem. He's making it seem bad because that's all he's got. He knows that if you know what he knows, you'd stop him. So he don't want you to know it. That's what all this, this pandemic, this is making everybody just scared of everything. Folks scared, walking around in fear. If you're walking around in fear, the devil got you. 
God says he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of what? Power. See, there's no power if you have fear. There's no power if you have fear. You can't have both. That's illogic. That's illogical for you to have power and fear. If you have power, then you should be able to overcome the fear with the power. Amen. Remember when you was young, if the bully came, remember the bully? Y'all didn't have bullies. You know, the way we came up, you can't come home and tell your daddy you're getting bullied. Now, it's a new day. Let me give this disclaimer. Don't you go out and do what I'm about to say. It's a new day. But back in my day, you couldn't come home. Could you come home, Deacon? You couldn't come home and say, Daddy, a bully. He's going to beat you. Your daddy going to beat you. And then he going to say, see what I just did to you? You go do that to the bully. But behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. This is the best part. Nothing, look at somebody and say nothing. Nothing shall by any means what? Hurt you. God's son became one of us to die and then be exalted to the right hand of God. This is very significant. Hebrews 10 and 12 says, but this man, Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down where? Where did he sit? On the right hand of God. This is very significant. This act, listen, was done to put a representative of us in a heavenly place so we could have heavenly authority in an earthen vessel. Look at somebody and say, God knows what he's doing. So God came down as his son, took on the form of man, not just to show us how to live, but he took on the form of man to take the form of man to heaven to represent us. Yeah, put a representative of us in a heavenly place. Look at somebody and say, you have authority now. You have authority because you have a representative in a heavenly place. Ephesians 2 and 6 says, And hath raised us up together and made us sit together where? Where are we sitting? In heavenly places. How? In Christ. So because he's in a heavenly place, we're seated in a heavenly place. I'm sorry I had to use a cartoon, but this was the only black pharaoh and, that I could find. And we know for sure that pharaoh was black. Amen. Uh oh He was. That's historically correct. I mean, Ra? Come on now. Ra was baking stuff. <laughs> but it don't matter what color he was. His blood was red, amen? So we don't do the race stuff in here. Amen? Like we all the same. One race. Look at somebody say, there's just one race. Are you human? If you're human, the blood of Jesus can save you. Remember how Joseph went down to Egypt and was seated on the throne next to Pharaoh? Y'all remember that? Genesis 41 and 40, thou shalt be over my house. This is him talking, Pharaoh talking to Joseph. You will be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne, his throne, will I be greater than you. So he made him second in command, seated next to him on the throne. And y'all know Joseph is a type of Christ. When his brothers went to Egypt, remember that? Y'all remember? The famine happened. Brothers was looking to get some food for the famine. But remember, his brothers had already done him dirty. They had throw, you know, they, they, they threw him in a well. And sold, no, they, yeah, they threw him in a well, then sold him 
into Egypt and took his coat and put blood on it and psyched his father out. And I mean, these brothers were so jealous of him because he gave them the testimony of the, the you know, the sheaves bowing down and the, y'all remember that? And the fat calves eating the skinny cow, all the dreams he gave them were basically prophetic dreams. I know some folks say, whoa, see, that's the problem. You telling folks your dream, that had nothing, to, it was gonna happen whether he told them or not. He saw it. If God showed it to him, it didn't matter who he told, it was going to happen. Quit preaching. Quit saying that stuff. That's an old preacher cliche stuff. Look at somebody and say, don't tell nobody your dream. You know? <laughs> See, that's what happened. Like Joseph did it to himself. <laughs> Why do people do that? Trying to be cute while they preach. <laughs> Brother, that won't preach. No, that won't preach. But they had... <clears throat> His brothers were in Egypt, so his brothers went to Egypt. Joseph could get anything he wanted for them. They had authority because he had authority. They only had to go to Joseph and ask, and he could do what? Grant their request. The Bible says it like this, Genesis 45, 7 and 8. Ooh, this, this, this scripture just, ugh. And God sent me, this is Joseph talking to his brothers, God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth. God sent me, y'all thought y'all was hurting me, but God was sending me forward so that I could posture myself by Pharaoh's side so that when our family needs something, all I got to do is lean over and ask. God put me in a high place. <laughs> God sent me before you to preserve you a, a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a what? Great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me here. What y'all did didn't bring me here, but God. He hath made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout how much of the land? All the land of Egypt. So listen to this. Joseph, being one of them, one of his brothers, had been exalted to a place of what? Authority. And because of their relationship to Joseph, they were what? beneficiaries of his authority to get what they needed from Pharaoh. Genesis 45, 17 and 18. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, when his brothers had come and he saw that his brothers needed stuff, Pharaoh stepped in and said to Joseph, say unto your brothers, this do ye, laid your beast and go and get you unto the land of Canaan. Take your father and your household and come unto me and I will give you the what? Good of the land of Egypt. And ye shall eat the what? Fat of the land. Because they had one of them in a high position. <laughs> Jesus exalted mankind to a heavenly level by dying in the flesh and rising in the flesh. He took his body with him and is seated next to the Father. That's significant. He took his body with him. So that one of us could be a representative. John 20, 27 says, then said he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side. Be not faithless. What was he saying? He's like, look, this is me. I still have the body. Jesus had rose, but his body was still his body. Because he was taking that body somewhere. I got to put this body next to God so when y'all need something... <laughs> <laughs> when I see you in pain when I see you hurting all I got to do is look at my body and I can feel what you're feeling when Stephen 
Now, y'all remember what happened to Stephen? Stephen's getting stoned because he's preaching the word, and these guys don't want to hear the truth because they don't want to change. So they're covering their ears, the Bible said, and gnashing their teeth. Shut up, Stephen. Stop preaching truth. Your truth is conflicting with our ambitions. But what did Stephen do? He kept on preaching. Stephen preached unto death. And the Bible said, when Stephen stood up for him unto death, what did Christ do? Stood up for Stephen where? Wait, this is important. It shows you. Oh, my goodness. Acts 7 and 56, he said, Stephen said, behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man doing what? So he's seated at the right hand of God. But when Stephen stands up for him, what does Christ do? Stood up. Because we have a real representative in a heavenly place. Look at somebody and say, stand up for God. No matter what they say, no matter what they're doing, they can't do nothing but annoy you. Stand up for God. Stand up for truth. Because when you stand, Christ stands. You don't think when God sees Christ standing, God is like, oh, oh, they made my son stand? I got to do something special for this person. They must be of importance. What they're doing must mean something. So you think you just fighting for truth and folks messing with you and you know how they are? No, it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. Remember that old song, Sending Up My Timber? That's what you're doing. It's not just here. But it's in a heavenly place where your representative can be proud of you. Look at somebody and say, stand up for him. Jesus is our advocate. That means he's got us. He's got us. He endured the cross so he could have us. He endured the cross so he could represent us. He became one of us so one of us could be up there until the rest of us get there. Jesus is our advocate. He is our intercession. Interceding at the right hand. At the right hand interceded so when you pray, he prays. He joins in in intercession. Whatever we need is negotiated by him with the Father. Can you imagine that? You, what you have need of, we all come together and corporately pray, and then he leans over to God and starts talking about what we're talking about. Wait, 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 y'all, we got to hold up because Stephen, Stephen's about to be martyred. So Jesus just stops and just stands up. Woo, woe unto the folks that's doing the persecuting. Now, whatever we need is negotiated by him with the Father. First John 2 and 1. My little children, these things I write unto you, that you what? Sin not. And if any man sin, we have a what? Who's our advocate with the Father? Jesus Christ, the what? The righteous. So he, he lives sinless so he can represent us as sinless. Oh, it got deep right there. Think about it. You already sinned. We all have already blown it. But we need a representative up there that can represent us sinless. So instead of God seeing our sin, he leans over and sees him. And that gives us authority. Since we have one of our own in heaven, we are all elevated to a higher place in God. Matthew 18 and 18. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be what? 
bound in heaven. Whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be what? This is because our advocate, our representative makes this possible. That you can pray it in the earth and it affect heaven. Jesus' death did not just save us, but it gives us authority to do what? Speak his name. There's power in the name of Jesus. Philippians 2 and 10 says that at that name of Jesus, what's going to happen? Every knee shall bow. Every spirit, every demon, everything against him has to bow to the name of Jesus. This is a good word to me. Before he left, Christ told his earthly brethren, anything you want, ask me. Anything you want, you can have. John 14 and 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, what? That will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Jesus wants you to ask. He wants you to ask. He's your advocate. Do you know what he went through for you to be able to use his name? That's why he said you don't take his name in vain. He went through death so you could live. And use his name. So you can cast out devils and heal the sick. And speak miracles. You can block demons from even coming in your house. With the name of Jesus. Amen. Just, get, just pray the right stuff. Speak his name. There's power in his name. There's healing in his name. There's deliverance in his name. Summary. Joseph could get anything from Pharaoh for his brothers. God set that whole thing up so Joseph could get there. So that when his brothers and his dad and his family needed him, Joseph would be in a place where he could get anything from Pharaoh. That gave tremendous authority to Joseph and to Joseph's brethren. In the same manner, Christ can get anything for his people. As saints of the Most High God and joint heirs. <laughs> you know you're a joint heir with Christ? As a joint heir with Jesus, we have his authority to ask for the things we need. If they are according to his will, he will grant it. This is dominion and power in the earth that we should all act on. Jesus saved us from sin and death, but he also made provision for us to be able to get what we need from God. The Holy Ghost connects us with him and allows us to commune with him and petition him as he does what? In the sea. Christ is our mediator, and because he has flesh, we are able to be joined to him as brethren. Because he was tempted at all points, like we are, he doesn't just intercede for us spiritually, but he is able to empathize with our humanness and feel what we feel. God has created a wonderful way to be touched by our infirmities, and answer our needs, whether they are natural or spiritual. You don't just need spiritual things. Sometimes you need natural things. We're humans. Amen? Jesus, they needed natural things. When they was hungry, he fed them. That was natural. When they needed some money, he told them, go get a fish. Amen? Somebody need to pull their pole out. But he told them, get the fish, get the money so we can pay what we need to pay. So they're natural and spiritual things, but he understands them all. Our authority in the earth is a powerful, uh-oh, yet what? Uh-uh, here we go. Costly. You thought it was free. 
No, it's going to cost you something. Oh, but salvation is free. Salvation costs you something. It's a free gift, but it's going to cost you something. Look, somebody don't understand. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought I was saved. Once saved, I always saved and saved. When I was little, I got saved. When I was young, I didn't even understand it. But I got saved. They got me on the heavenly ledger, and that's all I need to. First of all, the heavenly ledger is in heaven. That's heavenly. That's what that part means. And salvation is going to cost you something. It's going to cost you some persecution. It's going to cost you some demons coming after you. It's going to cost you walking around with a target on your back. If it's real. Amen. Oh. Mm -hmm. Some folks, well, I don't have to clap. The devil never messes with me. That's because you work for him. Why would he mess with his number one employee? You're doing a great work. You're doing an awesome work for him. But our authority on earth is a powerful yet costly gift from God. Today we want the harvest instead of the plow. We want the crown without the cross. God's authority is what? Costly. It's going to cost you just to be a member at a church in 2020. Yeah, folk coming after you, trying to pull you out of church in 2020. Demons, devils, they don't want you hearing the word. His indwelling will cost you many pleasures of this life and passions of your own. Can I keep going? Y'all, Can y'all handle this next part? Sure, grace is free and unmerited favor, but it requires belief, which is costly in our day. It's costly because it costs us everything. But grace is free because it is given to people that do not deserve it. <laughs> it costs Jesus his life, and it will cost us our lives. We must give up our selfish ambitions, desires, and motives if we want his authority. You can't have his authority and do it your way. You can't have his authority and disrespect God's authority in the earth. <laughs> you don't think the devil know that you can't submit to authority? He'll tell you. Now, why would I submit to you and you don't submit to nobody? You don't even submit to your husband. You don't submit to your pastor, your father. You're going to make the devil submit? In order to walk in the full authority of our co-heir, Jesus Christ, we must be willing to give ourselves what? Totally to him. He stood up for Stephen because Stephen was giving his life for him. If you want him to stand up for you, you have to give your life for him. Hebrews 4 and 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is past where? <laughs> the great high priest took his body and passed into the heavens, Jesus, the son of God. So let us hold fast what we're talking about, our profession, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He went up there as one of us so he can be touched by what we feel. And he was in all points tempted like as we are, but he was without sin so that he could pay the penalty of sin for us. Let us therefore come what? Boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find what? Grace to help in the time of need. Everyone stand to your feet. You know, th these messages, this message right here, this is like that kind of truth. You won't make it in the end times without his authority. You have to have it. Like you got to be able to speak God's authority 
and know that the enemy and spirits and demons respect you and what you're saying. They know you mean business because they know when you don't. They knew the sons of Sceva didn't mean business. So they know when you mean business. It's time for us to take this authority and use it. But we have to mean business. Amen? And when I say business, what am I talking about? Well, it's just going to take you giving up the things that you know you need to give up. Can I say that one more time? You got to give up the stuff you know to give up. One more time. You have to give up the things you know to give up if you want his authority. Because the devil knows what you've been doing. Amen. The devil knows how you've been living, how you've been talking, how you've been walking, how you've been drinking and smoking, how you've been fornicating and committing adultery. How you been watching stuff on the internet you shouldn't be watching? How you been texting the wrong folks and sending the wrong stuff? How you been creeping and dibbling and dabbling? Ducking and dodging and hiding. Devil knows all of that and that's messing with your authority. You can't speak like you need to speak to get what you need. If God is the deliverer that has, if God has everything, and Jesus is there to get anything we want, then we need to be in good with them. That's if you want it. The Bible said Joseph brought his brothers all around and hugged them all and told them, it's forgotten. It's forgiven. What you guys did to me, that speech I gave you, that was a part of it. It's forgiven. Because y'all didn't even know what you were doing. I didn't know what you were doing, but you would get me in a place where I could help all of y'all. So it's all forgiven. The same way Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They don't know that they have to do this to get me where I need to go so there could be hope for humanity. Yeah, that's what it was. So listen. You got to get forgiveness and repent and be in good standing with him. And then you'll see his authority working for you when you speak it. Amen? Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you for this message. And God, right now, and I'm not going to call you up because this is everyone. We need your authority operating in our lives right now. Father God, we're tired of the enemy taking advantage. We're tired of the enemy knocking us around. We're tired of the enemy kicking us around. We're tired of his depression, his anxiety, just giving us all these crazy moods and all these weird feelings. And Father God, we just know it, this has to stop. So we pray right now, Father God, that you will first forgive us all just of our sins and just being in bad standing and allowing old stuff and issues and whatever it is. You just speak that to him right now. What, whatever it's been, God, the struggle, that struggle that keeps coming to get in my way. The only reason that struggle is coming is because it's there to block you from the authority you have in Jesus Christ. So right now, Father, we just submit to you. We ask for your forgiveness, and we ask you remove this from us, Father God, and help us, Lord God. Help us to stand for what is right. Help us to stand for what is true so that we can be in good standing. So you will stand for us, just like Stephen. You will stand for us, God, in this hour. And Father, we pray right now for your authority, that we'll be able to walk in your authority. We'll be able to call things into order with your authority. We'll be able to speak your authority. Father God, we need it in this hour. In this hour, many are sick Many, Father God, are giving up. Many are walking out on the faith. Help us to stand with your authority in this hour. And we just say thank you, Lord, for the provision. Thank you for setting this up. Thank you for taking a human body 
and putting it in a heavenly place so we could have a representative. Thank you for being mindful of what we need. And we pray right now, God, that you will help us to get what we need from you and walk in that as we enter into this last stage of our world existence. God, we give you glory and honor for it. Now just lift your hands to him. Father, I pray right now, everyone in here, God, that your authority will pour into their lives. As our hands are lifted up, Father God, pour your authority in our lives. God, help us to think about it. Help us to speak it. When we're face to face with the enemy, face to face with sin, face to face with issues, help us to step out and speak with your authority, the authority you've provided us all. Father God, so that we can walk better and be better in this last hour. And we speak right now against, Father God, all demonic strongholds. We speak against witchcraft. We speak against, Father God, every demonic vice, everything that the devil is trying to do. We speak against generational curses. We speak against soulless ties. Father God, we speak against illicit unions. We speak against every demon spirit that has tried to latch on to us and we speak against every end time spirit that has been unleashed and we cast it back to the pit from whence it came, Father God, and we stand on your authority that you've given us that the devils and demons must recognize. And we'll take this authority, God, use it in our homes and we'll use it in our cars and we'll use it on our jobs. We will walk in your authority from this day forward in Jesus' name name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen.